And they were like, that was really disrespectful. Me and Robbie were like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. It's bullshit. I think we're done with this place. And that boy walked in there with a set of nuts. And even though some people wanted to punch him in the fucking mouth, he walked in there and he apologized. He said his piece. And I think for him, that was it. Then obviously the, the, the situation would happen with Robbie and him going to TNA, uh, yeah. appearing at, at TNA. Uh, yeah. how, how did you feel about that? How, what was your reaction when you had heard about this and, and, and saw it? Oh, trust me, I heard about it pretty quick. So Vince had done this big, big speech. I would, I'd, I'd went down there not as a wrestling talent, but um, I was going down there. They were doing a charity auction for artwork. I do canvas art. In fact, that's a piece of mine behind me right now. Um, <laughs> Well, it's part of a three-piece set, <laughs> but they fell off. I'm doing work in the house. So I was down there as, uh, you know, just selling some artwork for a charity. And but Vince had his whole, uh, you know, gr brass ring speech. It's just the biggest pile of horse shit you'll ever hear in your life. And he said to everybody, he said, listen, I know we're here and you guys got a lot of friends in the other locker room, but I don't want anybody going there. You're here for WrestleMania. And... Me and, me and Robbie have talked kind of about how it got to that phase. I think, you know, he was just kind of done. He was he was pissed off at the business, you know. At that point, I think we both were. Um, and, you know, I think at that exact moment, he made his decision that he was going to go. And I can't speak to what he was thinking at the time. We have spoken about it, and that's his to talk about, you know, because it's still a very important thing. But I went back to the hotel. I had my son. He was only six weeks old. And I'm, I'm there with him and my, my, my girlfriend. And uh, Johnny Ace called me. He's like, what the f is going on, Rory? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, your cousin was just seen on TNA, and I didn't mean it. It was mostly a spastic <laughs> reaction. I just started laughing. <laughs> well, I'm, anybody was going to do it, it's going to be Robbie. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, okay. What do you want me to do? I went, mean, obviously, I'm going to get heat with this at all. He's like, no, you're not. Bullshit. Hmm. No, you're not. You're going to be good. Don't fucking worry about it, Rory. You're a good guy. And, you know, but this is bullshit. It's your... And I don't even remember the rest of the conversation. He's like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, I hung up. And I went down to the bar. And I sat with uh, Harry Smith and, and his sister Georgia and TJ. And I'm like, I think we're kind of fucked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and they're like, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. But, you know, you know the business yourself, yeah. you know. So uh, at that point then, sorry, I'm moving my camera a bit, but it's keep slim. Um, at that point, I went back upstairs. Apparently five minutes after... I went back upstairs, Robbie walked into the bar, which is a testament to my cousin. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't going to hide from it. He wasn't going to shy away from it. He knew what happened, and he was good with it. He was going to go and apologize because he knew how much it upset everybody else, but he was good with it. And that boy walked in there with a set of nuts, and even though some people wanted to punch him in the fucking mouth, he walked in there and he apologized. He said his piece, and I think for him that was it. Once he'd said his piece, he was done with it, and he was okay, and and that was going to be what changed his life. If that's you know the way he wanted it to be, I can't speak to that. But there seemed to be some. It was weird at that time. There seemed to be some sense of calm over him when I did finally speak to him, which was at a bar. Man, I can't remember where I spoke to him. He went. He oh he went on vacation with his uh, his son and his mother in law, I think, and his wife. Um, didn't seem that upset to be honest, and I wasn't that upset either. I, uh, I thought about the, the first night. I'm like, well, we're getting fired. Here's a good thing. I'm injured. They don't fire you when you're injured. Hmm. Another eight months rehab. Let's see how this plays out. So you know, he kept going there. I, I raised my son and everything else until they called me back to go to New, uh, Richmond, Virginia, for the last match that we did. And I went in there. We were fairly certain, even if they didn't fire us, we did, we went to a bar afterwards and met these two uh, private contractor uh, military guys. 
I uh, one of them Buck, I can't remember the guy's name. And we just sat there talking, and they were like, that was really disrespectful. Me and Robbie were like, yeah, yeah, we, you know, that's bullshit. I think we're done with this place. Um, I don't know what to say, but it, it, for me, it's still funny because it's 2022. That fucker was on the screen for 11 seconds. 11 seconds. It's had over 100 million views. <laughs> I keep saying to Robbie, you're the most over per second talent this century. And I want to make him a shirt that you know, says that, like yeah. TNA's for talent per second. <laughs> and I'm still gonna. Uh, <laughs> but I just think, dude, it changed my life in many ways. Maybe I wasn't ready for that change. Maybe I was. I don't know. But it happened and we had to both live with it. And I look now and I've had all these years with my, my son and we had a daughter and you know, my career's panned out in a great way and I've got a really a very good career and now I'm doing my own podcast now and everything else. And I'm just enjoying life, man. You know, so from that moment, maybe that was the best thing ever happened to me.